Physics problems from the real world. Was the cable broken? It's the story. Once upon a time, back in 1964, there was this untidy, very absent-minded soldier named T.G. And that got him in trouble with his brick-headed bosses. He was the rated repair technician and that was the only thing he was good at. He was cool when he could get make a repair, for then he was usually pardoned of any ongoing sanction. At the time of this story, he was serving a month of lock time inside his unit when the radar screen went blank. He thought it was godsend. But that was until he realized how deep was the crap he was into. The real world problem. The radar antenna and the transmitter receiver hardware were on top of the small hill. Well away from the control cabin, you know, the one with the screen that had gone blank. The signal from the antenna to the control cabin came through an underground coaxial cable 1500 feet long. This underground cable, emphasis in underground, had broken somewhere down there. The brass has given him a pat in his back and a shovel under the burning sun. He was also told of a spare cable in case he gave up the idea of finding the fault and chose to bury the entire 1500 feet of the spare one. Ha! Huh. What an option. The problem turns into a physics problem. In full panic mode, the antenna operator told TG that the system got crazy. The oscilloscope that monitored the output of the control cabin was showing two pulses instead of one. The old scope screen looked like this. However, for TG, this was quite a break for he immediately realized that the second pulse was a reflection from the open circuit fault and that the time of in interval between the two pulses was revealing its location. But, but well, there's always a but. Documentation said very little about the cable, so there was not a chance of knowing how fast the pulse will travel through it. However, there was a spare cable, so TG connected the spare to the same output for measuring what would be the reflection delay for the entire cable. Here's what showed up on the screen. It could be read that the entire delay would be 4.4 microseconds plus minus 0.05. Let's follow the implementation of the idea. The total length of the cable, uppercase L, equals 1500 feet. Reflection time for the spare cable was uppercase T, 4.4 plus minus 05 microseconds. Reflection in the broken cable was lowercase T, equal 2.9 plus minus 05. Distance to the open circuit follows the following expression minimum of that expression would be 961 feet taking the minimum for the broken cable and the maximum for the spare cable doing the opposite we find the maximum of that possible length 56 feet of uncertainty the cable was laid trying to follow a straight line for without accuracy of the greatest concern. The cable could easily be 10 to 15 feet off in either direction. So, leaving the search area equal to a rectangle 30 by 56 feet. And here's the not so happy ending. TG picked up his shovel and went tape measuring toward the search area. Once near enough, he saw his boss holding some papers 
arguing with a guy from the neighbor farm over the new fence. They had overstepped into military ground and one of their fence posts has severed our cable. Bottom line, the brass had already found the spot by other than technical means. So TJ was getting no pardons this time. Tough luck. Here are some questions. Assume that the fence post had shortened the cable instead of opening. What, if anything, would have shown on the scope screen? Could TG has used DC resistance to determine the location of the short circuit? If yes, would it be better to use resistance instead? Now hit pause. Try coming up with your own answers before watching. Don't cheat. Here are the answers you may already figure out. What, if anything, would have shown on the scope screen? If your answer to this question is that the cable is shorted so no pulse will show, wrong. It is true that no voltage can build on a short circuit, but a short pulse many feet away will not know it until it gets there. So the pulse will show an altered at the beginning of the cable. This answers the, if anything, part of the question. When the voltage pulse hits a short circuit, it is reflected inverted. At the short circuit, the incident plus the reflected pulse must always add to zero. The oscilloscope screen must have looked something like this. Could TG had used DC resistance to determine the location of the short circuit? The answer is yes. He would have to measure the total resistance RT while shorting the spare cable at the other end. Then measure the resistance RX of the buried cable that had been shorted at an unknown location. The distance x to the short circuit is the fraction of the total length that equals the resistance ratio. A typical value for RT would be then around 15 ohms, and RX will be around 10, easily measurable values with the instruments available to TG in 1964. Would it be better to use resistance instead? At TG, a known matter like this one, in which the 15 ohms could be read with an error less than 0.05 ohm, it would have certainly been better, for the search area would have been reduced from 56 to 9 feet. However, a mold matter in 1964 would have looked more like this. With such an instrument, you could easily have a 1 ohm uncertainty which would have enlarged the search area, so the answer is no. It existed, even back then, more accurate instrument for measuring resistance, namely the Wiston Bridge, which one here would have gone down to the hundreds of an ohm in that measurement, but TG, uh, he didn't have one of those. One last question and uh, this one will remain unanswered. How would the waveform look like had the sync pull width been uh, not one, but five microseconds? You would be figuring out the actual waveform that TG saw back in 1964. Good luck. I hope that with this video, you learned something beyond that of wave propagation and transmission lines. The main moral here is the importance of basic knowledge when dealing with real life problems. This is Armando Rodriguez and I invite you to subscribe to this channel.